let's get into it then. We don't want to waste your time. So I talked about how you move things into the framework and into the web service in order, like the, the web server in order to avoid a bunch of blocking, right? And say instead of blocking in a bunch of different places in your controller, basically send it to the framework to handle it, send it to the server to handle it, so you're not blocking it to your end. Okay, so this was an example of the Spring MVC Reactive Controller that we saw, right? The, the controller method returns an object of type mono or an object of type flux. So you're not blocking in the controller method. The Spring Framework is going to handle the mono somehow, right? Call, do the callback so that the web server is handling it and the web server from there on, right? So you're giving back a possibly future resolving thing and the framework or the web server is handling it. And here, fetch user mono is a method which returns a mono, right? And you basically give it to this thing. But but it's not it's not that straightforward, right? You're probably gonna look at this and go, wait a minute, it's not always this easy. Okay. What if a typical use case for something like this would be something like this, right? You need to fetch the user mono and then maybe check something on that all user object, right? Uh, see if the user has an active flag. If it's an active flag, then do something else. If it's not active, do something else, right? And then fetch the user details, populate the user object and return. Okay, so it's not so it's not as easy as just getting the user mono and then returning it. Right? It doesn't quite work that way. And you can't just use a subscribe as well, because when you subscribe, you're basically having this controller method hold on, right? So when you do a subscribe over here, which means that this thing has to block because the subscribe is kind of, well, not technically this thing has to block, but something else has to block in your code because you're doing a subscribe over here, right? You can't just give back the mono and say, go, you go subscribe and do it, right? Because you need the user object to figure out if that if there is an active flag, right? You need the user details from the database and you need to you need to pop that you need to hold the data and then return the mono right not just return the mono directly right and you can't do a subscribe because once you do the subscribe you're out of the picture of the mono right how do you do this well you handle this using something called operators okay if you look at the collection stream operators view this should be very similar right just like we did the subscribe is a corresponding corresponding property a corresponding operation to the uh, for each. Similarly, you have all the operators that you are familiar with in uh, collections that you can kind of use for flux and mono as well, right? So here is an implementation of some operators on a collection stream. Say so array start stream, so you get a stream out of it. And then here you do a filter where you're filtering out all elements which are null, and then for each all elements, you're printing it out, right? So you can technically do this, with flux and mono as well, right? You can say flux dot filter of element, but element not equal to null, and then you can subscribe to it. So subscribe is when you've done everything and you want to do a final act on the, the event that's emitted. But then there are several steps that you can take in the process while still retaining the mono, right? So here, when you do a flux dot filter, what you're going to get back at the end is another mono. Okay, you remember we did when we did these things, right? When we did the uh, when we did exercise one, each one of these was another stream, right? When you did a flat map, when you did a filter, what you got back was a different stream. So the same way, when you do flux and mono, and you're doing these operations on them, what you're going to get back when you do a flux dot filter, you're going to get back another flux, okay? And then you can subscribe on that flux. So the subscribe is going to get called for each element that is past the filter, right? If the filter doesn't work, like if filter is filtered out the element, it is going to get, the element is obviously going to get fired in this flux, but the flux that is returned from this thing, that element is not going to get fired because this filter is going to remove it, right? This filter is going to get back a different flux object where the elements are only those that have passed this predicate, okay? And then you can do a subscribe on it. Now, as you can imagine, if you want to do this controller thing, where, where you want to check if the user has an active flag, right? And, and remove users who do not have an active flag, or sorry, yeah, remove users who don't have an active flag. Well, you can do something like this, right? You get that service, right? Service get user flux, 
and then dot filter of user, user dot active is true. And then you return that. Instead of subscribe, you're going to return that flux. So the controller is still going to get a flux, but you've had the opportunity to manipulate it. Now, how does this work? It again works when the event is fired. What you're doing is you're saying, when this happens, when this happens, just like you're saying, hey, when this mono resolves, go give it to the user who is requesting this. The same way what you're doing is, when this mono resolves, check if the user is null or not, and then the result of that, you give it. So you're not, you're not checking the user is null or not here. You're asking who are you giving the mono to. You're asking them to be like, okay, what you're going to get back is a mono that you're going to have to run these calls, right? They're going to execute these calls, and one of them is a filter, and then only the result of thing is what's going to get returned. Right? You're going to put the places, put things in place to execute when the event finally gets resolved. Okay, again, just like that other callback, this is a callback, just like the subscribe callback executes only when an event comes in. The filter callback also executes only when an event comes in. So now, since you have the filter on the top, the subscribe callback executes only when an event comes in in this flux, which is the flux returned by the filter, okay? All right, so um, if you look at the collection stream, versus flux, you can see that they are very, very similar, basically the same programming paradigm, right? So we'll look at operators now. Basically, all this is possible, all this kind of manipulation while still remaining in the flux, without blocking, while still remaining in the flux in mono world, is possible by using these operators.